Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> my name is Jeff, and more important than my name is a really important question for you. Who here loves figuring out JWTs? Anybody? Yeah. yeah? <laughs> Someone from the authentication engineering team sneak in here? Um, well, I don't either, um, which is why I wrote this talk. Um, I don't like figuring out J JWTs. I don't like remembering what HTTP headers to attach to requests. I don't like figuring out password salts. And that's why I really like Firebase authentication. Instead of worrying about all these details, Firebase authentication gives me what I really need. A login function where I can sign in a user, a hook where I can listen to see if the user signed in or not so that I can update my app state accordingly, and security rules so that I can still control access to my database safely. And this model is really nice because instead of worrying about so many small details, I just think, okay, I have an app, it's gonna talk to a database. And I have an app, it's gonna talk to cloud storage. And this really simple model with the help of app check and security rules means that I can write my app quickly and um, just have this really simple model instead of worrying about API layers and JWTs and passing the right auth state around between services. And inside this world protected by app check and security rules, I can also trigger background cloud functions like um, based on a database write or a, uh, upload to storage to do things like copy image metadata from a new upload to storage into Firestore. And this world is so comfortable for client apps because Firebase owns the server and Firebase gives me some magic client SDKs that handle passing the right auth authentication tokens back and forth. But today we're gonna venture a little bit outside this comfortable world and instead talk about doing a little bit of authentication ourselves on the server when we need it. So first let's talk about when we might need a server. I already mentioned background tasks, for example, uploading an image and then copying some of that metadata into storage. And that's kind of covered because we can trigger our functions behind app check and security rules. But there are other use cases too. For example, if I'm building a game that has some pretty complicated game logic that I want to run on a server to make sure people aren't cheating, I might need an API that my app can call to verify if a new move or turn is valid. I also might want to let people build their own clients so that they can access my app services in creative new ways and support platforms that maybe I haven't built an app for yet. And finally, maybe I'm trying to really you know, increase my page render speed and get things to Web, my website to render more quickly for users. In that case, I might want to server render my website, and that has its own considerations outside of the comfortable, you know, client-oriented Firebase authentication world. And when I'm doing stuff on the server, I need a powerful SDK to help me out, and that's the Firebase Admin SDK. Since it's designed to be run in a trusted environment instead of a client app that I have no control over, I can do some extra stuff that I can't otherwise. I can use a whole bunch of common server languages to connect to Firebase services without worrying about security rules. And this is really powerful and great because a lot of times on the server we might want to do bulk reads or bulk writes and not worry about um, impersonating a specific user to access specific data. The admin SDK also lets me generate and verify auth tokens, which we'll come back to later. So if we have Cloud Functions for Firebase, and we have an admin SDK where we can do stuff, what, why is this a problem? Well, let's work through it. If I have an HTTP endpoint, like a REST API, it has to be open to the world so that people can access it and call it. And this endpoint that's open to the world and takes whatever data people send to it is using the Firebase admin SDK because it's running on the server. And this admin SDK can't impersonate a user and it has access to all my Firebase services. Can anyone see why this might be a problem? All right, so it's a little scary, but we're gonna work through some common approaches to solve use cases. Let's start off with that example I mentioned about complex game logic, where instead of my app talking directly to real-time database or Firestore, um, first it calls an API that verifies if a move is valid. In that case, it's actually pretty easy. We can use callable functions. These are an extra layer on top of HTTP functions 
that make it easy to pass data back and forth between the client app and the, the server. The reason this is easy is because we're still kind of within that Firebase box. We know that our app that we control is using the Firebase SDK, and the Firebase SDK gives us this standardized interface where we can pass data back and forth. And on every request, it also attaches the auth context, so is somebody logged in and who are they? And also the app check status. Is this app a verified app that I know that I control and not just somebody trying to spoof me? And so if this is all we need to do, it's actually pretty simple, and this is what the code looks like. Beyond the boilerplate on the top and bottom for setting up a cloud function, a callable function, I can check in the request object and say, hey, is there, an app check? is there any app check information? If not, I can fail early and reject the request. Same with authentication. The authentication status is baked right into the request object, and so I can check if somebody's logged in at all. I can check who the user is, and maybe I have some metadata stored in Firestore where I need to look up a little bit more about them. But in general, I have all this information, and that way I can safely execute whatever code I need to in my function. But there is a more complicated use case, and that's when it's not just my app calling the API, it's also third-party apps, so other developers that want to build their own clients to talk to my services. And since we don't control their apps, we don't know if they're using a Firebase SDK, we have to rely on standards instead. And for that, we'll use HTTP authorization headers. The idea here is that a developer at some point registers with us as a developer that wants to talk to our services, and we grant them an authentication ID token. And then this secret value, they need to send with every request. So that's what this diagram is showing. The API consumer, a developer, gets an ID token from Firebase Auth at some point, and then adds it to their app, and every request they make to our function has this bearer token. And this bearer token is then checked. Ooh, sorry. This bearer token is then checked by our function against Firebase authentication to make sure that this user is valid. And it also contains information about this user that we could look up in Firestore if we have any extra uh, metadata about you know, banned API users or something like that. And here's an idea of what that looks like in code. So this first snippet is what the third-party developer would do. So they would fetch against any URL in our server that we have open and simply just attach the bearer token as an authorization header. On our end, when we receive a request, we look in the headers, make sure there is a bearer token, and if there is, we can call the admin SDK's verify ID token method to um, get information about this user, decode the ID token. And that's pretty much it for APIs with our functions. So let's talk about something that's kind of like an API, but also very different. Like an API, server-rendered websites are some HTTP endpoint we leave open to the world so that people can access it. But could you imagine if your browser, every time you tried to go to a website, said, hey, can you copy and paste your ID token so that I can send it as an authorization header to the server? Um, I don't think any of us would use the internet if that's the way it worked. So instead, we have to use a different standard to get server-rendered websites to work. And we'll use cookies for that. So the way it works is on the first request to a protected route in our site, the browser will just send a get request. The server will say, hey, there are no cookies here. Go sign in and come back later when you are signed in. When this user is signing in, they'll sign in client side against Firebase authentication. And similar to our bear token flow earlier, they'll send a request to our server with an authorization header and their Firebase ID token. Just like before, the server will ver verify this bearer token against Firebase authentication to make sure it's real. But the difference here is that when it sends a response back to the browser, this response will contain a cookie. And this cookie contains a top secret code that the browser will then automatically attach to every new request so that it can send along authentication context about the user. Now, when the user tries to access the protected route again, the browser sends along that cookie, 
The server checks and sees it is valid, thanks to Firebase authentication, and it can actually return the web page. And now, instead of you know, a user going in there and typing in an ID token, the browser handles all of this automatically for us. And here's a quick look at how it would look to implement this. So when the user first signs in on the sign-in page in the browser, we'll call the Firebase client SDK's get ID token function. Then, just like before with our, with our bearer token flow, we'll fetch against a special URL on our server, get cookie URL in my example, and request, uh, send a request with an authorization header. The server will respond with a cookie. By calling the admin SDK's create session cookie method, and then attach that cookie to its response. Then, on every subsequent page request, when the browser does send along a cookie, we can parse the cookie and call the admin SDK's verify session cookie function to make sure the cookie is real and get information about the user. So overall, it's not the most complicated flow in the world, but there are some pitfalls to worry about. First off, our cookie settings. We want to make sure that people aren't creating their own cookies to try and trick us. We want to make sure cookies expire if we want people to not be logged in forever on our site. And we want to make sure that everything stays secure. It's also a bit tricky with these server-rendered frameworks where they create some HTML on the server, send it to the client, and then spin up client SDKs on the client for more reactivity. Um, it can be hard to pass the auth state that we've already verified on the server into the client. So that's something else to think about. And finally, since we're using the server, we're still using the admin SDK, and that means we can't impersonate a user to have security rules applied to their requests. So we have to implement our own logic to protect our data. But overall, I think we found a few techniques to make sure that we can do auth on the server without it being too scary. We can step a little bit outside of Firebase's comfortable client-oriented world and still be able to keep our data secure. With background triggers, we can make sure our functions only run when, something, when a service that's behind security rules and app check has been triggered. We can use callable functions to automatically send along authentication state and app check state. We can create authenticated HTTPS endpoints with authorization headers. And we can do cookie-based auth with a combination of authoriz authorization headers and a cookie flow. Now, as an added bonus, the newly announced dynamic framework support for hosting is working on making this cookie flow a lot more simple. So in the future, you might see things like being able to use the client SDKs on the server, or even this cookie auth being handled automatically for you. So please check out the new dynamic framework support if you're interested in that. Thanks for spending this time nerding out on functions with me. Yeah.